Hi and welcome to Soundwave TV. I'm Christina and we're here backstage with Rob Zombie and John Five at the Rob Zombie Corn and Mushroom Head Sideshow. How are you guys going tonight? Good. Everything's good. So you guys met um, back in the day at a Camp Freddy show, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so what, what did you guys first think of each other when you first met? Well, we met before that. Yeah, we met, we at, met at... What was that? Manson's house. No, it was Tony's house. I mean, Tony's house, you're right. You're right. It was, uh, Manson was having a birthday party at their manager's house, and that's where we met. Yeah? Just like, hey, how you doing in the kitchen type. That was where I met Ginger, too, actually. Yeah, but the, the story is that, you know, I always did, you know, when you do interviews, people ask you, oh, who do you want to play with? And I always said Rob Zombie. So when I heard Rob was coming to the party, I was like, you know, trying to, like, you know, buddy up with him and stuff like that. Cause I, such a huge white zombie and Rob Zombie fan. So, uh, you know, I got to meet him that one time, but then we didn't see each other for years and years and years. Yeah. We, we played and uh, played Thunder Kiss, and Rob was walking out. I think we were playing another song, and I li physically went off stage and yelled in Rob's <laughs> ear, which I apologize for, if you ever need a guitar player, let me know. And he was probably didn't even understand one word. You know, <laughs> <thought>. Like, okay. <laughs> and then how long after that did we start? I don't know. I don't know either. But nine years later. But when I did, when we did start playing together, he was like, well, we're going to do OzFest and it's only going to be, you know, six weeks. So, you know, don't get comfortable. So six weeks has turned into nine years. So. Come on, get on. Get on, get on. What makes this kind of so special for you? I think uh, I look at it as like a family, you know, and, uh, you know, my great friend and everybody in the band, you know, the grass is not always greener, you know, it's just... We're the only band I know that does everything together. Mm -hmm. You know, like bands start off that way, like, oh, we're on a van, we're all, you know, together doing this thing. But as time goes on and the years go by, they're never together, you, like, because we tour with a, a lot of bands, yeah. and you never see them all together. But we're always all together. We always eat together. We're on the bus together. And most bands have separate buses for everybody, but we always want to be on the same bus. I mean, not here, of course, but um, I don't know, because we like we like being in a band. You know, I was you know, even though it's my name, I always wanted it to be a band. Yeah, here's a great example. We have two dressing rooms. And all, everyone's always in one, and there's always one. Yeah, one empty room like, sitting there. With, like, food or something like that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. White Zombie was the exact opposite. There were separate buses. Everything was separate. It was not harmonious at all, and that's why it fell apart, because it came a point. It was a hard decision to make, but it just was... It sounds ridiculous to say, but, you know, we would finally had all the success and sold millions of records, and we're doing sold-out arenas, and every day was miserable. It was just miserable being in that band because you're, you know, around people you just don't want to be around. And it's not fun. And you have to walk on stage every night and play with people you don't even talk to and put on this completely fake show for the crowd. And it just became so phony. I just couldn't do it anymore. Like yeah. with this, you know, we're backstage goofing around. We'll go on stage and go, it's, it's real. I, I hate being phony. And that just felt so disingenuous to go on stage every night and act like, hey, everything's great. It was a disaster. And Marilyn Manson was a similar sort of a separated situation, or yeah, <laughs> it was. You know, of course, it was. It was crazy. You know, it was like you sometimes didn't even want to be in that room because there was, you know, chairs going through the window and like you know broken glass everywhere. So, you know, I, my funny, we would ha each have roommates in in the in the, for our backstage, and my guy was Ginger. And now here That's he is. That's really funny, yeah. In this it's situation. Funny. So, uh, is it nice kind of welcoming him into the fold? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. You know, we, he is, uh, how do I put it? Not of this earth. Not of this <laughs> earth, yes. But he's a coup. But he's, he's <laughs> ours, you know, so. How's the new record coming along? You guys are working on a new... It's going good. I mean, we worked on it for a while, a couple months ago. Was it a couple months ago? I don't know, a month ago. And we wrote a lot of stuff that we'll go back and finish in May, probably, once we get all this tour behind us. Yeah, awesome. Oh, I know when something's not good, and this is amazing. Now I feel good about it. Yeah. Do you remember the first song you guys wrote together? Um, no. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Do you? Uh, what is it? Let it all bleed out. Was it really? Yeah. Oh, funny. Yeah, and what happened was, is he called me in just for like a session. You know, I wasn't really even in the band yet. They're like, 
hey, you know. Really? Yeah. Do you want to come, want to come play guitar on this? I don't even you know, remember. There's already guitars on it, but you know, maybe you could do a little something, something on it. I was like, sure. Oh my god. And I was like, all right, this is my big shot. Yeah. You know, and <laughs> this so. This is my uh, moment. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously it didn't affect him that way. <laughs> <laughs> I was in TM. But uh, it was uh, it was great, and let it all bleed out, yeah. which was on Educated Horses. But you played on all the songs on that yeah, record. Yeah, but game. then then that's after that, you know, then it progressed into okay. everything else. Then, you know, yeah. so he was like, "All right, let's make a record." So what's it like, sort of, you know, transitioning from your solo career to being a part of Rob's? Really, I mean, what? Well, it was. What do you um, sort of miss about it. Or I'll try to sum this up really yeah. quick. I just put out these instrumental records kind of like for myself and for my friends. Yeah. And the first one, it just, you know, blew up really, you know, big. And uh, then I just made another. So I just do it on my off time yeah. to, you know, just to play and for myself and the people. And then it just started to get really big. So it's perfect because he's doing a movie and I'll do a record and it just works out great, you know. And it works out good too because, you know, within the context of a band, John isn't always able to showcase everything he can do because it's just not really possible. Yeah. So it gives him a good outlet for people to really mm. see how talented he is without, you know, because yeah. a lot of it doesn't show, you can't always get it across in a song, but when it's instrumental, it's great. I, am the I, am the I mean, we wanted to have a groove always. I mean, it has to be fun. Yeah. And I see a lot of, this. I just feel like the, what has sort of made metal sort of eat itself is this sort of nonstop fake angst that everybody has. Because you know these guys off stage and they don't act like that and everybody's angry and uh, yeah. on stage. And it just sort of like, some of that's great, I mean, but when that's all it is. Yeah. You know, it just... It, Aggression doesn't really... It doesn't really, go anywhere. Yeah. I mean, that's why none of the bands get huge because people get bored with it. The most important thing is, you know, it's got to have that groove. Yeah. You know, it's got to have that thing. And, uh... You can dance to it almost, yeah. yeah. I mean, all great rock bands had that. It doesn't matter if it's Led Zeppelin or Black Sabbath or mm. whoever. They all had a really strong groovy. And, you know, even Pantera back in the day was yeah, super groovy. Yeah. And uh, somehow that's gotten lost in the shuffle. Everybody, I don't know, it's like, the, and I see bands sometimes, I feel like they're afraid that the audience will have fun. Or they're afraid, what, what I've noticed a lot is that they'll be, they're afraid what the other bands will think. Yeah. Like they seem like, rather than being in a band's all about like, well, it's me and I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want, that's why I'm in a fucking band. It seems like we notice they get really worried about what other bands are gonna think. Like, well, we are, we're all supposed to dress like that because that's metal and we're supposed to act like this because that's metal. And it get real, gets really strangely conformist in what should be the most non-conformist field you could ever be in. Well, I hope you guys have a great show tonight. Thank you. Tonight's gonna be good. Yeah. Tell already. Rob Zombie, John 5, Soundwave TV. Thank you.